In this video, I will show you how to use the Gudian SPM analysis software to measure the size of gold nanoparticles from your AFM image. First, you'll want to double click on the Gudian icon on the desktop in order to open the software. The control window opens here on the side. You can see it has uh, your normal Windows toolbar up here and then a bunch of tools here which are available depending on what your data is. Next you want to find your data file and uh, Gwitting can read almost any type of uh, AFM data format as far as I can tell. So for example, um, let's click and drag this uh, topographical AFM file into the files part of the control window and it will automatically pop open a data window with your image in it. Now you can see the uh, image isn't perfectly flat. The background is uh, tilted. And so the first step uh, we need to do to, before we can measure the particles, is to flatten the image. So here in the data processing group of tools, you can see a number of different uh, icons, and if you hover over them, you can see what the tool is for. Here we have a series of flattening type tools. Let's try this one. So you can see that did a pretty good job just as a first uh, pass. And that'll actually be good enough for this image. You can zoom in or zoom out on this image, and you can see that these there's bright points on a relatively flat surface. These bright points are probably our nanoparticles. So we want to measure the size of those. To do that, we're going to extract a profile of this topographical data. So this is the window to show us the profile line as we draw it. And what I usually do is I try to draw a line that's going to go through multiple points. And you want to make sure the line's going through the center of each point so that you're getting the maximum height uh, of that point. So here you can see this is uh, 0 microns starting at the start of the line here to about 1.5 microns, that's the full length of this line here. So this bright spot right here is actually this peak, which is a cross-section of that particle that's there. So you can draw multiple lines. Uh, and the computer will assign different numbers and colors to each line. And you want to try to measure um, you know, 20 to 40 of these spots total in your sample to get a distribution of the particle size. So here you can see my two lines are overlaid. I can show them as separate lines. So when I apply, I extract those profiles into a new data file and I said to separate them so I can measure without getting confused about what I'm measuring. So here are some tools for analyzing the profile I've extracted. I want to measure the distances, so I click this icon and pulls up another toolbox. <clears throat> and here's my cursor now, so I could pick the top of the peak and then I want to pick the bottom of the peak to get the height of the peak. And I could pick either side. And so we've got three vertical lines here where they intersect the curve, the profile, are the xy points. And then here's the differences between the xy points. Here's the height. Oh, since I started at the top of the peak, then it goes from negative from the top down to this peak. 
negative 5.8 nanometers. Maybe we want to actually do this differently. Let's start at the base of the peak and then measure the top of the peak. And so that gives us the height, 5.86 nanometers. And that should be the diameter of our nanoparticle. And what's interesting when you do these measurements, uh, so you want to write this down somewhere. There's not a good way of extracting this data. Um, or like making a table of the data to save. So you write that down, this, this particle you measured here, and then we measured one here, 7.47 nanometers. Measured one here, whoops, I didn't quite get that. So you can see this is why the background subtraction is important because that's where your baseline is for these profile peaks. 8.3 nanometers, We got some, I guess that's the base here. 7.28 nanometers. Okay, so that's the height. And why do I keep focusing on the height? Let's look at what happens if we look at the width of the peak. Whoops, okay, measure, clear. So let's go from the start to the end of the peak, like we're doing like a, a GC or something. So now we want to know the distance from here to here. That's the length of these between these two points. 0.128 micrometers or 128 nanometers. So this scale is much different than this scale. The XY scale is much different than the Z scale. Um, and that's because of the interaction between the tip of the AFM probe and the surface. Okay, so do the same with your other profile here. We can do the same thing, measure the distances. The height of that peak is 11 nanometers. And actually, you don't have to clear it. You can say, well, then this next to the height's 3.2 nanometers. That one's 6 nanometers. OK. So once you've measured the peaks on these profile curves, those are actually the heights of these spots, and you just can measure more. I guess you could measure as many as you can stand in one pass to keep track of where you already measured. Clearly, this is a isn't a nanoparticle; it's a agglomeration of something. Okay, so I drew a few more lines. And remember, if you click the box separate profiles, then when you apply, you'll make a different graph, different curve for each profile line. So you measure those particle sizes, or the heights, and that gives you particle sizes. You make a table, and then report in your lab report the um, mean and the standard distribution to give a particle size distribution. Or you could plot it as a histogram. It's also uh, often done with this type of measurement study. And that's all. When you're done, you can just close all this out. And the original file should remain unchanged. Yep, so we went back, pulled up that file and you're starting over on the analysis.